Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and this lesson is about scientific notation. First off, we have to make sure that we remember the rules for powers of 10. Powers of 10 are basically moving decimals, and if we can move decimals, we can do scientific notation. So a couple of examples, 10 to the power of 1 is 10, 10 to the power of 2 is 100, 10 to the power of 3 is 1,000, 10 to the power of 4 is 10,000. And don't think about this of, as the number of zeros, but instead how far we move the decimal from the number 1. And that will make more sense once we actually get into scientific notation. But also, negative exponents. Moving the decimal the opposite direction. Again, if you start at the number 1, you're moving the decimal one place to the left. If you start at the number 1, you're moving it two places. So basically, you're moving it from here, 1, 2. Negative decimals or negative exponents move the decimal two places to the left. And that's also important to note that it only works with the number 10. So not all negative exponents move decimals, just when we're talking about powers of 10. So scientific notation, how is that different than the lesson that we already did on uh, powers of 10? First off, with scientific notation, you always have a number, in this case x, times 10 to the power of something. It will always be set up that way. You'll always have something times 10 to the power of something. There's one digit on the left of the decimal, and I'll show you some examples when we work with numbers. And scientific notation is actually used in science to measure really, really big or really, really small things. For example, the distance from Earth to the nearest star other than the sun, or um, you know, the mass of the Earth, or things like that that are really, really huge, or the size of an atom, or the distance between electrons, or something like that. Like things that are really super tiny, you would also be using scientific notation. So that's where this idea originated. That's where it's mainly used. So let's do a couple of conversions. We're going to convert from scientific notation, this number, into standard form. Notice when you look at the number here, you have 3.78. There's 3. That is our one digit on the left of the decimal. That's going to be very typical of scientific notation. This could be written as 37.8 or 378, but with scientific notation, you always have one digit on the left of the decimal and then the rest of them on the right. So 3.78 times 10 to the power of 4. What we're going to do is take that decimal and shift it four places to the right. In other words, the number is getting larger. To do that, we have to fill in the zeros with all of our blank places there. And we would rewrite our new number out as 37,800. Notice, from the original number, 3.78, the decimal moves 1, 2, 3, 4 places. It is not the number of zeros. The most common mistake that people make is that they just throw in a bunch of zeros and they'll say, oh, there's an exponent of four. I'm going to throw in four zeros. It's not adding four zeros. It's moving the decimal four places. So that's an important note. We'll cover that again. Let's look at a negative exponent. So 1.24 times 10 to the power of negative five. Notice with negative decimals, you still have one digit on the left of the decimal, 1.24. So let's go ahead. Um, negative exponents are going to make the number smaller. It's going to shift the decimal to the left. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 places. We have to fill in zeros for every place that is empty. So our answer would be 0 0.0000124. Notice again, it is not the number of zeros it is how many places the decimal moves. That's a really important key part here. All right, it's not the number of zeros, it's how many places the decimal moves. Now what we're going to do is do the reverse. We're going to convert a number from standard form into scientific notation. So there's a couple of things to remember. If it's a really big number, the exponent will be positive. If it's a really small number, the exponent's going to be negative. So let's take a look at this number. We have one digit 
on the left of the decimal. So in other words, we are going to move our decimal to right here. That's where the decimal is going to go. The decimal starts out here. So we have to count how far it's going to move to get to right there. And this is how far it moves. It moves six spaces. One, two, three, four, five, six. So it becomes 5.69 times 10 to the power of six. Some common mistakes. Some people will forget about the 10. They'll just write 5.69 to the power of six. That's a very common mistake when we first start doing scientific notation. So here are the things to remember. One is that you need one digit on the left of the decimal. Two, you need to include that times 10 to the power of, and the exponent is how far the decimal moves. So we just have to keep those things in mind. Let's do an example with a negative number. So here we go. Again, same points. Big is positive, small is a negative decimal. So this one's going to have a negative decimal. It's got a really small number. So we're going to move the decimal so that it has one digit on the left of the decimal. We're going to write it times 10 to the power of something, and the exponent is going to be how far the decimal moves and in which direction. So this is a really small number. It's going to have a negative exponent, and it moves five places, so it would be times 10 to the power of negative 5. That's how scientific notation works. We've done examples of converting from scientific notation into standard form, and also from standard form into scientific notation. We're going to look at two more questions today involving scientific notation. This is a sample type question that you might see. Um, what is the mass of the sun in scientific notation? Here is the mass of the sun in kilograms. I'd like you to go ahead and convert that into scientific notation. Step number one, one digit. I'm going to have the digit of 1.99. One digit on the left of the decimal and the other digits that are non-zero are going to be included. I have to include times 10 to the power of something. Now I have to count how many times does this move. Now when I get numbers this big, I typically count by threes. I go 3, 6, 9, 12, instead of counting every single one. So if you go ahead and count all of those, you are moving it 30 places. So which is easier, 1.9 times 10 to the power of 30 or writing it out like this? You see how scientific notation can be helpful, hopefully. That's how scientific notation can be helpful and why it's used when we're doing huge numbers with science. Next type of question is to actually multiply two numbers that are both written in scientific notation. So you notice I have two numbers. The first number is here, 5.69 times 10 to the power of 6. And my second number, 2.34 times 10 to the power of negative 3. When you're asked to multiply two numbers that are in scientific notation, it helps to put all the tens together and all the other numbers together. The reason for this is that if you remember the rules for multiplying exponents with the same base, if they have the same base, like 10 to the power of 6 and 10 to the power of negative 3, all you need to do is add the exponent. So 6 plus negative 3 will give us positive 3. And our second part is this number here. I grab a calculator and I write 5.69 times 1.23. And this is what I got. Now, if you don't want to use a calculator, you don't have to. You can multiply those two numbers together and you will get one point or 6.9987. I like to include all of the numbers in it. Um, but if you are asked to round, you certainly can round this down. Now we can go one step further, which I, I didn't prepare in the slides, but we can definitely go one step further and um, convert this from scientific notation into standard form. To do that, we look at our exponent 3. It's a positive 3. So our decimal is going to shift three places to the right. In standard form, this would be 6,998.7. If we wanted to take that one step further and convert it from scientific notation into standard form. But typically, you'll be asked to just leave your answers in scientific notation, which is just like that. So again, just a quick recap, you put the numbers together, the powers of 10 together, multiply them separately, and then you're done. 
you can write your numbers out um, in scientific notation. And if you want to convert to standard form, that's how you would do that as well. Here are your Common Core anchors and eligible content. Hope that lesson was helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.